We have a yard kitty visitor here. We were just taping off our bootstripe. We're adding a small bootstripe above the waterline as well. This is kind of like a little bit of a buffer. Our waterline has already been raised, so we're not raising our waterline. We're just adding another bootstripe. And Jordan is already getting started with painting the top bootstripe. Alrighty guys, sorry for the abrupt start earlier. We had already kind of gotten started this morning and we're ready to go, so we just went for it. But anyways, we just did our bootstripes with this Interlux Bright Side. This color is sapphire blue that we used. It was the most similar to our paint that was already on there for our bootstripe, so we just kind of went with that. As you can see, we've added a small bootstripe above the waterline and we also repainted the bootstripe that was already there. It looks pretty good. It doesn't look perfect. We're not going for perfection here. We're going for the 50 foot rule. So if it looks good from 50 feet away, it's all good. Alrighty, so that has been repainted. That is new, that bootstripe there. As you can see, it doesn't go all the way down to the anti fouling. The new anti fouling is gonna go all the way up to the bootstripe though, so that white space is gonna be gone. And then tomorrow, we should be painting all of this white space and doing two to three coats on this. So let's see how that goes. As you can see from here, it looks pretty dang good. We finished the bootstripes yesterday and this morning we went ahead and taped off the bootstripes that we had already painted and we are getting ready to paint the white Interlux bright side top coat in between the two bootstripes. We're trying out frog tape this time. Jordan thinks he remembers a comment or reminding us to use that and it seems to be working really well but I just hope it leaves that nice line unlike the blue one yesterday. So. We're, uh, we're using the yellow frog tape which is actually supposedly good to put on freshly dried paint so since our bootstripes are freshly dried we're using that and now I'm just going over everything with a tack cloth just to get the last little bit of remnants off of it. We've already washed the boat everything this is just for like the final clean before paint so alrighty so I'm gonna it. get the camera set up and ready to roll so you guys can kind of see a little bit of what we're doing. Alrighty guys, I just wanted to give you a quick end shot of the paint job. I think it turned out pretty good. We ended up doing three coats of bright side. Definitely passes the 50 foot rule. She definitely looks a lot better than she did before. What's that, Randy? We are actually getting ready to make our own Dodger using a sail right kit. So we ordered a kit and all the materials that we need to put a dodger on this boat. We have a lot of the parts sitting out here and we watched some of the instructional videos yesterday. It's looking like we'll probably only get through putting together the actual frame today. It seemed like in the videos it took like a day to make the frame, a day to do the templates, and then onto the sewing. We didn't finish watching that part yet, so who knows how long that's going to take. But yeah, we are just getting ready to build the frame for our dodger. It's gonna look like that when we're done, right? Hopefully, something like that. Something like that. Putting in the hinges here on the sides of the cabin top. I figure this is probably gonna be the easiest place to put these hinges. We're gonna end up through bolting them, so the actual kit comes with regular screws, but we think it'll be a little stronger to through bolt it, and this is actually a good place for us to have access to the bolts on the back side. So we figure strength is probably better when you're offshore cruising, especially since we're going to be putting a grab handle here. We're using the one inch stainless steel tubing, so being able to easily through bolt the mounts makes sense to us, so we can trust them when we're offshore. And we um, can through bolt because this is where the PVC ends, 
and then we'll just cover it with the PVC later and it'll be easy access because there will be a seam there. So if we ever need to get to them again, we'll also be able to get back to them. Yep. So I think this is a good spot. All right, so the instructions have you do all this kind of weirdness and they kind of expect you to have six hands. So I figured this is actually might be easier to do it this way. We've got the length for the primary bow measured. So we're gonna cut the primary bow. Then we're gonna put on the slide and mount it to the hardware that's already there. And that's gonna help us hold it while we do the rest of the measurements. So I'm erring on the side of it being actually too large than too small. So we'll see. I, it's not the end of the world if we have to make another cut. This was not the recommended way of cutting, so, you know. So I'm marking these center pieces at five and a half inches each side, and that's how much we need to cut off each side. The way we got to that measurement is we actually took the maximum frame width and subtracted 73 inches, which is gonna be our frame width, and then divided that by two, and that gives us the cuts that we need to make here. If we just took 11 inches off of one side, that would actually create a weird a weird curve. So in order for the curve to be even, we have to take the same amount off each side. So we actually have to make two cuts instead of one. We just ran to Harbor Freight. We've been cutting this tubing with our angle grinder, but we wanted a cleaner cut because this cut's gonna be more visible. So we went to Harbor Freight and we looked for like a tubing cutter. Sailrite sells this as well, but we were too cheap to buy it from them. But this was six dollars at Harbor Freight, so we're gonna see if this will actually work. Probably not. <laughs> wow. wow! Actually, it worked better than expected. Yeah! But we just cut off that end, and we're about to do this end right here. This $6 tool from Harbor Freight actually worked a lot better than we thought it would. It's supposed to be up to inch and an eighth pipe, but it only says copper on the package. So we weren't, we weren't <laughs> thinking it was gonna work for stainless steel, but apparently it does. So I don't know how long it's gonna last, but hopefully it'll last the four cuts that we need it to make. And that's gonna be $6 well spent. I take back everything we just said. So if you look at the blade, it's actually kind of broken. So it only lasted for one cut and now it's making as you can see, it's not keeping its own track track there. So, alrighty, we're going to go back to the angle grinder. The yard cat has fallen in love with us. He's here all the time now. <laughs> we need to do this last little part. So, these bows come, we cut them, they come with a spline and rivet it in on one side, and then we have to join them after we cut them and then drill out a hole and then put another rivet in. We have our little portable drill press set up right here. And then we have our heavy and duty riveter for stainless steel rivets. We're really good at doing things proper and right like. Right like? Right like. Weird. Sound good? Yeah, no, it's good. And that is how you fumble through making a bow. Yay! For a dodger. We got two bows done. One is only probably about an inch taller than the other. Yeah. So this is the main bow, this is the secondary. And then now we will go start dry fitting it on the cabin top. Do you think that's okay? That's like so Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. when we're underway, the boom's going to be a little bit higher. Yeah? Yeah, it, that's probably the lowest the boom will ever be. Alrighty, you heard him guys. It's too big, it's his fault. Alrighty, so we've got the Dodger frame basically up with that tape that goes over it. Now, Sailrite includes this tape so that you can easily get it up in place and position it. As you can see, there really isn't much room 
between the top of the Dodger frame there and the boom. But the boom can go up a little bit, so that's not that big of an issue. We're basically making this Dodger as big as possible for the space. We want the forward bow there to be a little bit lower than the back bow, which it is, and that's going to help water drainage. But we also want it to be as high as possible to give as much visibility through the window from the helm over there. What do you think, Randy? Jordan started playing with the boom and making sound effects, and then we discovered we have a little issue in the corners. The traveler line cannot travel through the corner of the Dodger. So, I'm gonna have to figure that out. I've got it right and I got it wrong, but I learned my lesson hanging on. Come sit here with me by the fire. And